Hey everyone, um, thank you for watching us from all around the world because I know you guys um, you, uh, have started following us from all over the place as I shared the, um, our um, links and our um, you know interviews and stuff and it's just good to see that um, a lot more people are interested in what we're doing here in our little old city of Whangarei in this time of lockdown as we just come into level three. It's just such a busy time now all of a sudden just going from like hardly anybody on the street to having everybody on the street which is kind of crazy but as long as we you know we keep the distance keep safe hopefully we'll we'll go to level two very soon but it doesn't seem like it's going to happen too soon with all the nutters out there anyway so thank you for joining us uh we're going to talk about art we're going to talk about comic books we're going to talk about pop culture art we're going to talk about movies we're going to talk about horror movies because um uh, my friend uh and uh, co-creator uh seven same um art of evans on um one word on instagram also here on facebook if you follow him you'll see this amazing artwork it's such a great inspiration when you're looking at you know just being something that's a bit more different than your average dc looking things you know and it's just more inspiring it's just like when i look at anime and i get inspired by looking at anime there's so many inspiration out there if you're uh, right now having writer's block or creative block and so on and it's good to um see what other people are doing and be influenced by them or be inspired. I think a lot of times it's more inspiration. And I think it's a good thing for, as an artist, to be, to have people that you can be inspired by. Otherwise, you find yourself in a corner and you, and you find yourself, oh, my art's not good enough. Or what if will other people think? But when you look at other people's work, you go, well, how come they can do it? Well, then that inspires you to do it. Go, well, I can get out of my shell as well. And I think this is the time to talk about that as we come out of lockdown. And to talk about what we've been doing creatively as in, as well in lockdown. So, um, Shane, thank you for joining me, uh, my co-creator of uh, Red Dot. Red Dot, the character we're going to bring out next year. We were working out already for two years ago, maybe actually 2014. But we're now flashing out more as a comic book to put out on Indiegogo next year, as well as in print. So thanks, buddy. for um, And I know you've been busy. We've been trying to get a hold of you. You've been really busy with uh, painting a house taking all this time to actually do work that you haven't been able to do because you probably work about six days a week from what I remember because of all the things you do and and everybody, you know, wanting your artwork and exhibition here, please do something here, me calling up going, get this right. So please, yeah. um, your time, introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm actually doing, I'm doing coronavirus signs today at work. So <laughs> lots and lots of signs for health and safety today. Yeah, so you, you um you work as a um, hours, but... yeah you work as a printer so um sign writing and printer um sign writing and printing so that's your full time job but what else you know you you work as um as an artist as well so tell us about that. Uh, well, I do a lot of cartooning stuff and comic books, as you know. Um, I have recently been doing work for a gallery. For an Easter exhibition uh, that didn't work out. Still got the work and it's still going to be put on display, but not until June or July. Mm. Um, been painting cars, <laughs> been wallpapering houses. I've just been doing a lot of creative stuff and sketching every single day. Mm. So there's a lot of sketches up on Instagram. Um, yeah. I've actually enjoyed the time off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's. I mean, for people who work full time, it, it has been a, a time off to do some more personal stuff. And like you've said, you've um, been doing a lot of home um, house renovations and you know wall painting, painting and stuff that you haven't been able to do. And a lot of people, you know, have haven't had time to spend with family because of work and stuff. And you've been, you know, like like yourself, a lot of people have been finding this time to actually enjoy enjoy um, time with family, even though it's forced, you know, you get to actually, you know, spend a bit more time. Like, you know, it's like a, it's not the stress time that you would have as, at Christmas time when you're running around trying to get out there, out there, out there, whereas you're actually at home. How did you find that um, being with your two boys? Ah, it's actually pretty good because one of my kids is quite artistic and creative mm. and the other one is really into exercise and fitness. So okay. if you want to motivate yourself, do some exercise, hang out with one. And if you want to listen to weird music or 
talk about bizarre films, just hang out with the other one. So got got things in common with both. Well, that's a good thing, eh? I mean, like usually, um, you know, you sort of have kids and you don't know what they're into. But like when you um, when you're surrounded by creative um, creative parents, you're able to go, well, look, here's all this stuff. You know, do what you want. How did you find that raising two boys? I mean, they they're teenagers now, but I mean, what was that like as a parent? just have to do it so i don't know uh sometimes sometimes they annoy the crap out of you but most of the time you're fine uh, all right so let's talk about um because uh, we were we were at art school at the same time uh, and um you were about i think two years or a year ahead of me uh here in Fungare north tech uh what used to be called northern uh, northern polytechnic way back in the 90s so you were into visual art what got you started in visual arts I mean, this is like going back about 25 odd years. What? Am I that old? <laughs> <laughs> um, I wake up sometimes, I think. Where, well, what, 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 got me started, what got me started in visual arts is comics. So it's very, very easy. Mm. It's reading Asterix and Tintin and watching cartoons when you're a kid. Yeah. Don't grow out of it. <laughs> and what was it about that that got you you know i mean like a lot of people i mean i talk to they talk about getting in um getting inspired like yourself from a young age and they carry on with it what kept you carrying on with it because i know a lot of parents sometimes go well hey that's just for kids get you know grow up go get a job go do this go do that get a trade what kept you going on even though you went and got a trade in, in the visual arts but what what kept you going through those years of you know um uh, my parents were never like that. I mean, they were farmers and stuff, but all of my brothers all do different things and they never had an issue as long as you were doing something. You know, if you're just sitting on your ass collecting the benefit, they would probably hassle you. Right. If you're trying to work, whether you're successful or not, they wouldn't care. So they thought I was artistic. When I said I wanted to do artistic things, I was just like, Makes sense. Go for it. So, so, um, so, so did they actually, um, you know, um, fund your projects or something like that? Say that they, when you wanted to go to uh, go to um, arts, you know, polytech and art school, did they, um, you know, help you um, go towards that or? Um, we weren't, we weren't rich or anything. So I had to get a student loan and do it myself, but they supported me. So, you know, I didn't get put down if I was drawing pictures in my spare time. Uh, I didn't get hassled if I was wasting three hours watching a cartoon. <laughs> it was just part of what I was doing. So. Which is kind of interesting because I know a lot of people right now, uh, I know if you see some kid playing games for hours on end and the next thing is like, oh, you're wasting your time, you're wasting your time. And then, you know, they could be doing some, you know, they've been inspired for something else. I mean, we know that there's a huge billions and billion dollar industry in the gaming market, yet parents don't understand that some of these kids are actually are getting inspired while they're watching it like we were you know watching cartoons and stuff and reading comic books we get we got inspired and now here we are doing all this stuff and i think it's weird how there's there are parents like yourself your parents where you um you know where they just keep busy if you're doing it do it and then there's other parents that basically oh well you know you're just wasting your time wasting your time and um do you think as a parent, what would you, you know, like we're talking about parents now, what would you um, say to parents if they see their children uh, doing things that are not what they want done, but they actually either playing games or doing, um, you know, doodling or what that, what would you say to them? Uh, that's a tough one because um, you can just be wasting time playing mm. games. I mean, I, threw away an old PlayStation because I wasted too much time playing games. Yeah. Um, but if they play a game for an hour or so, and then they go sit down and draw or try and create the artwork or something like that, you can see that 
there's an area that they want or could go into. Yeah. So it's not all negative. I mean, you wouldn't hassle a uh, father who used to play rugby for watching the All Blacks on TV. Yeah. So it's the same thing, really. I think that's a, that's a something that we, we, we sort of um, are slowly getting away from, the whole fact that, like, um, you know, being sports-centric for decades, and we've learned that, especially in the last four four weeks with the lockdown that we can do without sports but we can't do a lot without technology we can't do a lot without arts we can't do a lot without doctors and so on and, sp and gaming because you know that's something that you actually can be entertained by and entertainment itself but sports can just sit to the side for the time being and i think you know how did you like um you know, you've done, you You were so busy at this time. How did you actually find time to actually start doing so much uh, creative stuff? Because I've, I've, I've looked at your Instagram, there's stuff coming out every day. And I'm thinking, he's painting at his house right now, is, you know, and wallpapering. How is he, you know? Um, I just make myself do it. <laughs> um, I enjoy it. So it doesn't feel like work. So if I'm sitting at, home at 11 o'clock at night drawing a picture i'm not forcing myself to draw a picture yeah um yeah i mean if you enjoy something it doesn't feel like work and you will try and do it anytime you can there will be months when i'm so busy i hardly get to do anything mm. but with this lockdown i am actually trying to take advantage of the fact that i have more free hours than usual yeah. So I've been catching up on jobs and trying to do extra, uh, getting onto a red dot comic, uh, which <laughs> has been sitting neglected for a while. I'm um, just trying to catch up, make the most of it. I've no, actually you been doing more creative work and still having more spare time. So, <laughs> which is kind of weird, isn't it? Like you know, when you're when you're working your eight hour day and you think like, okay, all I'm going to go home and relax whereas now you're like i have 24 hours in the day i'm going to do this 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 and you just put so much into it and i think it's i wonder if we'll come out of this keeping this sort of um timetables you know like doing so much in the day or whether we just go back into um into just the usual routine that we had for you know four weeks ago before lockdown what do you think about that uh, I hope I keep doing a bit more art. Um, I don't think I'll be able to do as much. Mm. And if anything has to suffer, I think my home renovations will go first. Uh, gardening can wait. I'll mm. just just buy the lawn. That's good enough. Okay, so you said you 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 said you were doing an exhibition for Easter. Of course, Easter we were in lockdown, um, and so but you had a, you were uh, you were commissioned to do a whole lot of Easter centric uh, artwork uh, in your style, um, however you want it. How many pieces did you actually end up doing? And what was it um, about? It's literally about Easter. So it's about uh, the religious part of Easter um, because the guy that owned the gallery was getting sick of going into shops and seeing commercial things for Christmas and Easter and people not realizing that Easter actually started as a religious thing. Uh, and I mean, it's not a bias thing because the guy that runs the gallery is not religious, and neither and no, am I. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's like people need to look at what it's actually based on and what the meanings actually are. Um, so I've done two, basically one and a half meter paintings, uh, and a couple of sketches from for a show, uh, which will be on later in the year. Okay, so let's talk about um, your pop art because it's very different um, for what you uh, compared to you know um, because you do a lot of like uh, horror based pop art and um, you know as very stylized and um, and their paintings whereas you know a lot of people do digital work you actually actually do it as paintings which is quite different and tell us about that um i do this paintings because i enjoy the physical thing of painting 
digital artwork is actually much easier to fix your mistakes and i am doing more digital artwork now but the actual hands-on traditional methods is just still to me just more fun more relaxing they're not easier they're mm. not always a better outcome but if i'm going to spend three hours doing something i try to enjoy it so that's that's the main thing uh the reason it's horror movies and uh, things like that is because if i've never had a blank or just think you know i need to draw something or i want to paint something being a movie fan that's obviously one of the first things that pops into my head so i do that uh Another thing is years and years ago, I had a tutor at Polytech who uh, I actually initially disliked a lot. <laughs> um, but one day when I was painting something and trying to get it as realistic as possible, he walks over to me and he says, what are you doing? And I told him what I was doing and he said, why? And I said, you know, it's just because I'm just trying to, just testing myself. He says, if you want to make it look realistic, buy a fucking camera. And that was it. I was like, yeah. for some reason, that point just stuck into my head. And I was like, that makes complete sense. If you're going to do artwork, you might as well make it look like artwork. The guys yeah. that do hyper-realistic stuff, they can impress me with their mm. skills. Um, but they can also find them really boring. Yeah. Like, I'm a huge fan of Alex Ross. Because yeah. his technique is fantastic. But I get bored of his paintings really quickly. Because yeah. they are so realistic. It's sometimes, it's just some guys wearing a costume that he's painted. They basically are. I mean, they are models. And I mean, I use models as well. But I mean, I think that's a cool thing. There is a thing about art. It's expression. And I think a lot of people forget that it's ex expression expressing your uh your outlook on life and stuff and so the idea that uh, let's get it as real as possible is like like you said you know buy a camera get a photo and everybody's doing a you know everybody's got a camera now so what's the point of that making it so real and art has a um as a real one thing i really find i mean because i'm watching a lot more anime and cartoons and animation even like recently watching a lego movie you know you can actually be emotionally tied to that um to the characters because even though it's like it's like so um you know unrealistic as well you know it's not even live action there's no human contact all it is are voices yet the person who's delivering the voices behind what's happening on the screen of the cartoon or the plastic lego pieces you can still feel the emotion in it and i think that expression comes out in art and i think the more people try to get realistic with it, you lose that. But, but um, I know you do a lot of different, I mean, a lot of horror-based um, uh, pieces, but they don't actually look horror. You know, they don't look like, you know, terrifying. They look more, you know, cartoony, and they look more pleasant. Uh, so what, what, you know, we're just talking about not being realistic, but what got you to actually do it that way? rather than being making a realistic looking horror depictions um, that's probably my that's probably my brother's fault because uh, he got me into movies i shouldn't have been watching when i was about eight <laughs> uh he would come in with things that were banned or uh r18 or just full-on movies and he was a real movie buff like the like the b-grade movies and uh i got into it so Things like Evil Dead and stuff like that. Mm. Some people would find them disgusting or gross or whatever. I find them entertaining, so I don't always draw them as terrifying as possible because a lot mm. of the horror movies I like, I like because they're over the top and kind of silly. Um, like I'd have more trouble drawing The Exorcist than Evil Dead. Yeah, The Exorcist is actually a serious film. It even now comes across as quite a serious thing. It's got a lot mm. of undertones. Whereas Evil Dead is a guy with a chainsaw on his arm and he's <laughs> hacking up zombies 
And yeah. if you look at it like that way, it's just fun and silly. And so you can get away with drawing fun and silly versions of it. You can do it serious. You can do it fun. It doesn't mm. matter. Um, to me, it's just what I grew up on. I, I, I laugh at movies that people would probably be shocked by. Uh, <laughs> I get bored with Hollywood movies that people love. I'd mm. sometimes rather watch a cheaply made independent film than a $130 million blockbuster. Because if I can predict the end from the start, I'm not interested. Mm. Um, unless it's an Adam Sandler movie for the reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking about comedy, uh, and, and that's the thing about your artwork, it's very uh, fun. And that's, that's what I love about the pop culture aspect of your artwork, of your paintings, and because they're fun. And, you know, there's no sort of... Uh, there's no sort of seriousness to it, but they're really, really great things to look at because they're just they're just fantastic pieces of artwork. And um, and one thing I find now is like um, you know, like you're talking about Hollywood, it's getting too serious. Everything's just like so many different seriousness of political and stuff like that. But then you get you get horror movies. It's just like well, there's a guy doing this and that, and there's people running around screaming, and you go, don't go in that room. And, you know, you're screaming at the character, don't go in the room, yet they run in that room. And it's like, you just, that's a laughing, that's an inside joke, that they're always going to go walking off on their own. So what what sort of, um, what are you, what have you been watching right now on Netflix? To be honest, I thought in the uh, lockdown, I would be watching a lot of Netflix. And I haven't. I've been drawing so much. I've been hardly watching anything. Um, yeah. I tried to watch nearly every animated show I could see on there. Um, sometimes I don't watch very much of them, but I basically just look at the artwork. Mm. Uh, I tried Castlevania because it had all these great reviews. So I actually got quite bored. <laughs> uh, I went back to some of the real kids programs instead because the artwork was crazier. Mm. So... Uh, not, not really. I've been raiding my DVD collection and rewatching old bad movies. I've rewatched uh, yeah. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, and uh, <laughs> I did watch RoboCop again. Um, yeah. Things like that, yeah. Things that were either extremely over the top. Well, they're all over the top actually. One's just comedy, and one's violence and uh, sarcastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cynical look at society. Nothing that was middle off the road and predictable. <laughs> well, I mean, um, they remade Robocop recently. Uh, I think it was about 2016 was or 18. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, I mean, that's, of course, um, based on Frank Miller's uh, Robocop um, comic book series from way back in the um, 80s. Um, we're... You know, what were you some of your, talking about Frank Miller, what were you some of your inspirations when it comes to art? I mean, we talk about Tintin and Asterix, like later on after that. Uh, Frank Miller. I used to love Frank Miller, but not for the ones that made him popular, not for his Daredevil or uh, Batman as much, but actually for Sin City. Mm. Uh, although I started reading the Batmans more after I got really into Sin City, so I kind of went backwards. Um, at the moment, of course, is uh, Hellboy. Uh, I'm not sure how you pronounce his name, so I'm not going to try. Mike, Mike Mignola. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but lately, I've been going for, again, the more unusual artists. So, like, Trad Moore, um, the Andrew, I think it's McLean, McLean, uh, who does Head Lopper. It's very stylized. Looks like a kid's comic, and yet it's full of violence. Um, is that a uh, is that the wrestling um, headlock um, comic book? No, no, headlocker. It's like a Conan. He's a barbarian. Okay. Uh, it's it's fun, but it's extremely over the top too. Um, mm. Gone back and reread some old Simon Bisley. Uh, yeah. Just to look at fully painted comics. Nice to see something like that that's not digital. And a lot of random European stuff. Just yeah. because the artists and the stories are so different than superhero. 
Mm-hmm. I think that's um, that's something that I, I mean I quite enjoy as well. It's just this, you know, just totally different art styles. Yeah. I mean, this is um this is from 2018, and this is by yeah, uh, hard that one this, this Bailey, <laughs> You know. Yeah, yeah. I borrowed that book of you just for the art. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, um, yeah, it was good. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, I mean, this is the thing, it's like, I mean, a lot of, um, I mean, there's been a, this huge, this um, bullying at the moment of um, people who do female figures on uh, on social media and male or female, doesn't matter who you are. I mean, this is huge jealousy from people who have never actually done anything themselves and yet they um, critique other people's work just so they can make uh, make themselves look good or become prominent up for being a someone who took somebody down in their artwork well, how do you deal with critiques um critiques you, you're going to get them whether you like them or not um you kind of just listen to them and see what sort of points they're making if they tell you that your anatomy is off and they are actually right you have to listen to them but sometimes if you do a stylized artwork and they say they don't like the style that's just personal taste i mean mm. i look at some of the most famous illustrators in the world and i don't like their art mm. like jim lee is a fantastic artist but i find them really boring i mean very similar to somebody most, else i think most of his characters look the same yeah but it, he, I'm not a huge fan of the over-the-top cross-hatching, cross-hatching. Um, yeah, yeah, like he's a fantastic artist, and if I could draw like him, I'd be happy. But at the yeah. same time, I get bored looking at his artwork. Mm. Uh, so it's personal taste, really. And I mean, people that attack all the ones that are online drawing sexy females and stuff, yeah. they need to get over it because... It's it's preference. It's personal preference. If a guy likes skinny girls with fake boobs, that's what he likes. Uh, they're not going to hassle someone if, if he likes huge girls that are overweight. Yeah. I mean, it, it's personal preference. You are drawing for yourself first. So. Mm. I think... Um... Yeah. That's actually quite. Uh, that's uh, that's actually quite important to note that nobody is actually no artist is out there going unless they're doing commercial art, right? Unless they're getting paid for by somebody else to do a specific artwork commission, like you, like you're just saying, as, as your work is a commission on uh, commission basis. When somebody goes, okay, I want this thing for this thing, that's the only time that people can say, well, it's not that. But most of the time. Artists, we're not doing anything for anybody else. We, at the end of the day, we are just trying to satisfy our own, um, our own self. And you're right there because when I'm doing something, it's not like what will somebody else think. It's like, is that looking right? Is that line doing right? And I'm, I'll be doing that line about twenty times, make sure it's got the right, um, you know, the right angle for the rest of the rest of the thing. And it takes me about a week to make sure that that um, you know, a few hours sometimes to make sure that I'm correcting the lines and we're not thinking in our head um, I wonder what that person on Twitter is going to think about this you know it's the last thing it's, it not even crosses our mind so I think you're right there it's not I think um, it's a lot of jealousy I think it's just jealousy in the end and um, because they haven't dedicated their life to their own you know to their own art form or they maybe they got bummed out sometimes somebody told them off and so they stopped but everybody else like us, we just keep piling on and piling on and piling on, pushing ahead and just doing it. One thing I remember was like uh, one of my friend, uh, one of our friends, I should say, um, Catherine Batchelor, uh, who does uh, these amazing ceramic dolls, like creepy looking yeah. dolls, which I love. I think they're just gorgeous. And uh, I was, uh, this is about two years ago. And um, I was there looking at her work and saying, wow, man, because I'm being a ceramic artist, I'm looking again, wow, this is just good work. Porcelain dolls, and she's dressed them up, and they're creepy dolls, right? 
like horror horror things, pop horror, ceramic. And it's like whereas yours is painting and stuff, hers is a ceramic type sculpturing stuff. We actually and, own a lot of her dolls. <laughs> yeah, and I missed out because she moved away. So I'm hoping she'll come back so I can actually get some of them. And I just, you know, just put it off and put it off. And what happened was like this this lady, probably in her fifties or sixties, came in. Next, you know, and I was just watching the work and she goes, You must have terrible nightmares. And I'm thinking, <laughs> what? I mean, that's the last thing she's thinking about when she's, you know, is having nightmares. She's probably having nightmares of fields of flowers and all that. And um, if you could call them nightmares. But I mean, this is how people sort of see things. That they think that just because you're doing artwork, your your life is dark and horrible. And it's like the whole idea of listening to heavy metal, right? If you listen to heavy metal, then you're, you know, you're, you know, cutting yourself every night or, you know, cursing people and just the whole thing. It's just this whole idea where what you do as an art form is your life. And I think all, that's how you feel about things. Like say, you know, like you're talking about like um, big breasted woman or big woman or white hip woman or whatever, skinny woman. But that's just art form, is it? You know, it's not something that you're living. It's, it's an inspiration and stuff. And I think... Um, you know, like like you talk about Conan the Barbarian with um, the lock um, headlocker. You know, that guy has to. Uh, you know, Momoa had to like every day exercise, 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 and to look like that. You know, to lift weights and look like that. Otherwise, he won't get the job. And it's the same thing with artists. You know, with us. You know, every day we're working and working on our, and training ourselves. Otherwise, we won't get the final product done. And um. And we're not looking to, um, you know, of course, we'd like to have our work sold, but we're not doing it to get it sold. We're doing it because we want to do it. And you're right. We do it for ourselves first. So um, how, you know, so what is it like when you're actually uh, back to the commission, when you're getting commissioned to do work? How do you deal with commissions? Uh it's changed over the years because when I was young, I used to try and do exactly what they wanted. Uh, I used to try and get, like, if they asked me to do a certain style, I would try and copy that style, etc. You know, um, but now I've realised, like, the older you get, if someone's commissioned you, that means they have hope hopefully looked at your artwork and they're picking you because they like what you do. Mm. And to me, that makes that also makes the most sense. You don't ask someone that's uh, fantastic at drawing cars to, and you get them to come along and draw a whole lot of people if they can't draw people. You look for yeah. someone that can draw people and you hire that person. So uh, usually with the latest commissions that I've had, there have been people that kind of know me or they've looked at my work and when they ask for something, I, I kind of find out what they want roughly, but I remind them they're going to get it in my style. Yeah. And um, it's usually fine because they've, they they have actually chose me for that reason. So I think if you try and change an artist, you're just going to get disappointed. Mm. Which is quite interesting because, I mean, like nobody will, would approach an artist and say, do do it my way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a cartoonist who's popular right now, the Sean Gordon Murphy. Yeah. He uh, did the uh, Punk Rock Jesus and he's done a few Batmans. Might have something um, here, but, um... he, he was getting asked a lot by his editors to copy other artists. Mm hmm. And he was about to quit, and he uh, drew the last issue of the magazine he was on that he was about to quit. He did it in his own style. He's like, if I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out in a in a blaze of glory. Yeah. So he did it in his own style, and that copy got him his next ten jobs. I mean, so when he started drawing for himself and having fun. He yeah. suddenly got more work. He said that was the best thing he ever did. And it's not something that one or two artists have said. It's like when the more and more you look at other artists' work and the more that you realize these are the people that just do it how they want. Um, 
when they get hired, it's it's not a surprise for the person hiring them. So, you know, they actually do well. They do well not trying to copy other people. We're back. Sorry about Where'd that. Where'd you go? <laughs> oh, I went to type in something and went back, 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 and it's like kicked me out. All right, so um, doing art in your own style. It can be tricky, though, because I like to change my style when I'm bored. <laughs> yeah. But I think there's a few things that consistently come through. I, I, I You know, like most, you can normally look at most artists and pick out a few things that they like to do a lot. And I think this is kind of advice for someone that's actually asking an artist to uh, paint something for them. Yeah. Just make sure you actually get a person that paints in the style you like first. I mean, that's the reason you're hiring them. So how many, I'm um, like, with this Easter, um, Easter project, you know, um, still... I guess they'll probably put it as part of the Christmas thing or some other um, later on. What was your? I mean, like you got you got told to just do it in your own style, and um, but this is the theme. Was were you asked anything else? Um, I told the uh, gallery owner who used to be a tutor at the Polytech years and years ago. Uh, I'd give them some options. So I, I did about 15 or 20 real roughs, real, real basic ones. He picked a few out of that. I, I defined them a bit more, gave him about three or four pencil ones, not that detailed. Uh, and then he picked the two out of that that he thought had the best story and the most appeal. And the thing is, we actually kind of agreed on them. Mm. Uh, I did tell him, though, that as I was painting them, things may change. Yeah. Um, but as I said, he had actually hired me because he liked how I painted. He had mm. asked me to do it because he liked how I drew. Um, so he expected me to add my own stuff in. So right. it, it's worked out fine as far as I can tell. But obviously, uh, that's when we get to actually finally have the show. I'll find out. <laughs> Now you've um uh, you've been commissioned to do a lot of um, covers for um, um you know comic books and other works. Um, who have you worked for? Like, I mean, I know you do a lot of independent work, but I mean, is there any that you, um, that we might know for your commissions? Uh, probably no one that anyone would know. Actually, they're all so, sort of small companies. Uh, a lot of private ones. I did one for, or well, not one. I've done about. 12 i think for a company called airship 27 hmm. uh they do a lot of pulp novels and uh the old what's it again the uh characters from like the 1920s 1930s that are no longer uh copyrighted they yeah. redo stories of that you know like they'll do uh things like old tarzans and stuff well not tarzan but characters from that era that are now public domain that's the one yeah. Uh, so that's a lot of a lot of cheesy pulp novels. So I've done quite a few covers for them. Unfortunately, they are making more sales online now than actually printed. So the yeah. need for covers has dropped. So mm. yeah. So um, getting um, I mean you you you're back to work now uh, with limited time. So is there anything, you know, is, um, is there anything you notice that in the art scene that you, you know, you think that, um, that, that sticks out to you right now and, you know, that you'd like to talk about? To be honest, I've been doing my own stuff. I haven't been looking at the art scene. Mm. Um, the closest I've come to looking at art is watching movies and uh, animation. So there's there's not a lot that I've been. I, I don't go to a lot of galleries. I, I grew up more on pop art and lowbrow and uh, commercial art. 
Um, you know, I'm not really into abstract paintings. Yeah. So. No, have you uh, been in my little public? Have you been watching? Oh, like you've been watching a lot of uh, animations and stuff. Have Have you seen the um, the latest um, altered altered carbon uh, resleeved animation? No, I haven't. No, I haven't because I never actually watched the series, so I haven't got to that one yet. It's a prequel, so I mean, so it's a so you don't even have to worry about watching the um the live action stuff because it's just you know set before okay. all that, and it's quite it's it's really really out there with the, with the you know it's kind of almost like Matrixy, with you know of like this anim animatrix series of um yeah of, right. um, animation. That was actually stuff. my favorite Matrix movie was the animatrix. <laughs> All the yes. shorts. Oh, I, thought was, I thought it was better than the two sequels. <laughs> I think one of the guys that worked on it is actually did worked on this as well, which would be interesting if if it's that's the case. But I um I think there's something about that. But also, you know, like um the love robot, love death and robots. Oh yeah, that uh, was great. I like that because no, I didn't love every episode, but I liked the fact that they mixed up all the styles. Hmm. All right. Um, anything else in closing? Would you would you like to talk about? No, not really. Um, I'm going to try and get some artwork scanned and sent to you soon. Uh, keep posting stuff. Awesome. So it's um, was it Instagram.com? Uh, let me just write it here, and it's uh, Insta. Oh, Insta. Insta. <laughs> I don't know how to spell Instagram.com <laughs> forward slash art of Evans. That's it. And that's also on Facebook as well. And is it one word on Facebook or is it like? Um... Uh, honestly, I don't go on Facebook enough to remember. <laughs> All right. Uh... So, guys, if you want to uh, check out um, uh, Seven's work uh, on Instagram, there's an um, address there. Uh, and yeah, like I said um, at the start of the thing, you can look at a lot of different things for inspiration. And um, one, you know, you don't have to do do it like everybody else, but you can you can pick and you know decide upon how you want to do your work. And that's what you'll be known for your work. You won't be known for as a copy of other people's work. You'll be known for your work. Like you look at Magnola, he's known for his work. Nobody goes and says, "Hey, go do like Jim Lee," or "Go do it like." Uh, you know, McFarlane. And even with McFarlane, he does it his way. So um, if you want to be inspired, go check out um, Art of Evans. And everybody is on Instagram now with the, showing their artwork. So you can see what other people's work is like. And it's just awesome seeing what's available. And like, you know, like I said earlier, like uh, Seven said, you know, you know, none of, the, none of us artists are doing it for anybody but ourselves in the end unless we get commissioned to do something and we're doing it to, because we love it. There's no other reason. Otherwise we'd be doing something else. And, um, and it's something plus it's in the place. And plus um, if you're good at it, you get paid for it. And, um, and it's an expression of ourselves. So whatever happens in the end, you know, we're just expressing ourselves. And so when people get angry about other people's artwork, most of them are just jealous and they don't know what to talk about or they just think that they can do it better. But they most, if they could, then they wouldn't complain about the other artists. There's a difference between artists and non artists is that artists don't go off on other artists. It's only outsiders that go off because we just go, that was pretty good, man. Um, can I have some of your work? <laughs> oh, I love what you did there. Uh, how did you do that? We're always learning off each other. It's only people that don't know or haven't spent time working on their art that come that have a beef with other artists. Most artists just go get on with life and carry on being inspired and being an inspiration. So thank you, Seven, for joining us today. And um, hey, looking forward to those scans. And thank you guys for joining us. And if you're watching this on uh, Inst um, on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. And thank you for following. And yeah, like it if you, if you don't like it. And share it if you like it. Thank you. Kakitano. Thank you. See ya. See ya, bud.